We had been longing to make a trip to Andaman and dad made it possible for us during the last summer holidays. Soon after the examinations, mom made preparations for the trip. On the 25th of April, we took the Pinagani Express from Vijayawada and reached Chennai Central by 1 p.m. After lunch, we hired a taxi for the port. In the evening, we boarded a ship for Port Blair, the capital of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The ship looked much bigger than our school building. It had four stories. It set out after sounding a loud horn. People who had come to see off their friends and relatives cheered them up by waving their hands. My sister Amala and I too waved our hands while mom and dad smiled at us. Tall buildings, cell towers and factory chimneys began to vanish gradually. After a while, the twinkling lights of Chennai bade us farewell. Soon everything around us began to look dark and calm, but inside the ship it was all bright and beautiful. When we closed the windows and doors of our cabin, we did not feel the movement of the ship. On the second day, we came to know that we were in the middle of the sea. The weather was pleasant on the sea. The day was sunny and the sea was reflecting the clouds like a flat mirror. We saw dolphins swimming along the ship. They sprang and dived again and again. It was quite amusing. I was curious to know what other people were doing on the ship. So I went around. I saw some watching films and some others eating and drinking in the restaurants. A few were buying things in the fancy stores. I was surprised to see some in a saloon getting their hair cut. The medical staff was busy treating the patients suffering mostly from sea sickness. The sanitary workers were on their job of keeping the cabins, corridors and toilets neat and clean. The crew of the ship was very friendly and courteous. They gladly answered all my queries about the ship. It was the third day. Early in the morning, mom woke us up to show us the magnificent spectacle of the dawn at the sea. After two days, we reached Port Blair. Dad, do you have any idea about these islands and the people who live there? I asked. Dad said, I know a little. There are about 600 islands. They are located between India's coast and Myanmar. Only 37 of them are inhabited. They have plant, animal and marine life in abundance. We learned that the inhabitants of the islands were the aboriginal tribes. Some of them lived far away from the civilized society. Despite this, the islands today look like a miniature India. We saw people of different languages, cultures and faiths living together happily. We visited a famous national monument, the Cellular Jail. We learned that the Cellular Jail was built by the British. It was no longer a jail. It had been converted into a big hospital. Mahatma Gandhi Marine National Park After a while, we reached an exciting place, the Mahatma Gandhi Marine National Park. The park was spread over a wide area of 15 islands. Open creeks running through the park area were a special attraction. We watched coral reefs, fishes of different colors and sea turtles through glass-bottomed boats. For some time, we felt ourselves as a part of them. Amala and I cheat the fish and turtles. We travelled by a ferry from Port Blair to a place called Havelock Island. The ferries carry people, vehicles and goods. 
we enjoyed pani puri samosas and garam chai during the ferry journey havelock island a majestic lighthouse greeted us on our arrival at the havelock island we felt as if the sand beaches and greenish blue sea were warmly welcoming us some foreign tourists on the beaches were basking in the sun and enjoying themselves we saw tourists enjoying swimming in the sea and riding on elephants silky sands forming tides and cool breezes of the sea attracted us very much we took lots of pictures of the beautiful scenery scuba diving we visited the beach called elephant beach to our amazement we saw some swimmers diving into the sea from motor boats they were dressed in different way they put masks on their faces and carried air cylinders on their backs i asked dad why are the swimmers diving into the sea dad replied they want to watch the coral reefs and beautiful colored fishes and sea turtles they stay for a long time beneath the sea and swim along with them it is called scuba diving the scuba diving filled my heart with the spirit of adventure i wished i could do it elephant ride on the beach lastly we visited radhanagar beach It was a beautiful place with a white sand and thick green forest along the coastline. We saw a man riding an elephant. He offered rides on payment. My sister Amala and I enjoyed a jolly ride on the elephant. We tasted delicious tandoori fish and other seafoods on the island. My mouth still waters when I remember those moments. I cherish the memory of the great fun we had. I will never forget my trip to Andaman. Sindbad the Sailor. I bought a substantial stock of goods to trade and sailed on a ship with a number of my merchant friends. We placed ourselves under the care of Allah and set off. Soon we reached an island. We decided to go ashore. My friends went to gather fruits and flowers but I took my food packet to a place in the shade I had a good meal and lay down to sleep under the trees I don't know how long I slept but when I awoke and looked out to see the ship had gone I was all alone not knowing what to do I climbed up to the tree of a tall tree and looked over the island on all sides In the distance I could see something white and decided to find out what it was. Soon I came to what seemed like a huge white ball. When I touched it, it felt very smooth. It was so high that I could not see the top of it and it was more than 50 paces round. There was no door on any side and it was too smooth to climb. Suddenly the sky above me became dark as if a huge cloud was covering it looking up i saw that the darkness was caused by the shadow of a huge bird that was flying towards me i had often heard sailors talk of great and wonderful bird called a rock this must be a rock i thought and this huge ball must be its egg The bird came nearer and sat on its egg. I soon crept close to the egg. Near me was one of the bird's legs, which was as big as a tree. I decided to tie myself to the leg of this bird with my turban so that when it flew away from the island, it would carry me with it. At daybreak, the bird flew up so high that I was carried out of sight of the island. then it came down again so fast that i lost my senses when i found myself on the ground i quickly untied the turban the bird caught up a snake and flew away this time i found myself surrounded on all sides by immense mountains that seemed to reach above the clouds 
the sides of the valley looked so steep that there was no possibility of climbing them when i began to look around the valley i found that there were large diamonds lying on the ground i was excited to find such riches lying around me then i saw something else that made me very frightened all around the valley there were huge serpents some of them big enough to even eat an elephant these came out of their holes at nightfall during the day i suppose they hid themselves from the rocks i found a small cave where i decided to spend the night at the entrance i put a large stone to protect myself from the serpents but the noise of their hissing outside made sleep impossible i was glad that they went to their house as daylight came on and i was able to come out again but i was still frightened in fact i found myself walking upon diamonds without a thought of their value at last being very tired i decided to eat a little of my food and then to have a short sleep in the sun i was suddenly awakened by something which fell near me i sat up and found that it was a huge piece of raw meat at the same time more pieces fell down from the rocks above the valley i had heard stories in the past about this valley of diamonds but had not believed them now i saw with my own eyes what the local merchants did to obtain the jewels they used huge eagles to carry up the diamonds for them when the eagles have young ones in their nest among the rocks they fly down into the valley to get food for them so the merchants would throw down large pieces of raw meat the diamonds stick to the meat and in this way get carried to the eagle's nest each merchant has his own nest and considers its uh, jewels his the idea came to me that i too could use these eagles i myself could be lifted up from this valley and thus escape from it the eagles were so big and strong that my weight could seem little first i collected a number of large diamonds these i put in my wallet and tied the wallet to my waist next i tied one of the largest pieces of meat to the middle of my back with my turban i then lay down with my face to the ground and uh, waited there there was sound of huge wings around me then i felt myself lifted up and carried to the top of the rocky walls of the valley soon i was in one of the nests the merchants were surprised to see me there and when they heard my story they helped me to find a ship to go home when i got back to baghdad i was a very wealthy man i gave large amounts of money to the poor and lived peacefully in my own home Thank <laughs> you.